So in this video, I'm going to be installing Rhino Linux in a desktop computer. So Rhino Linux, it's Ubuntu based. So Rhino Linux uses the XFCE desktop environment and that is by default. So this is their website. So I'm going to click on download. So here you got to select your edition. There's a drop down tab. There's also for Pine64 Raspberry Pi. I'm going to download a generic ISO file. So the desktop computer that I'm installing Rhino Linux in has an Intel Core CPU. So I'm going to click on mirrors and there are two options here. So I'm going to select this option and it's downloading. So the size of this ISO file is two gigs. So I'm going to be using Etcher to create the bootable USB drive. I'll download Etcher. This is the exe file. I'll click on download. So I have the Etcher exe file and the Rhino ISO file. I'm going to open Etcher, click on flash from file, select the ISO file, click open. So the size of the USB driver that I'm using is 16 gigs. I'll click flash. And it's creating the bootable USB drive. Okay, so the bootable USB drive was created and now I'm going to take the USB drive and boot up the desktop computer. So this is the boot menu screen of the computer. So I'm going to select the USB drive to boot up from. I'll select the first option, try and install Rhino Linux OS. So this is the default desktop and you can test Rhino Linux here. So this is the default wallpaper. So if you just want to browse the operating system, you can do so without installation. So I'm going to click on the installer. So this is the welcome screen. So here you have to choose your language. There's a drop down tab and you can select your language here. I'll leave it as American English. Click next. Here you have to choose your location and this is the region. This is the zone. So in the region you can choose your country and in the zone you can choose your city. And you can also move around this red dot. So I'm going to click next. So this is the keyboard settings. This is keyboard model. You can choose your keyboard model here. And this is the language here. The default is English. And on the right side here, I'm going to leave it as default. You can type here to test your keyboard. And this is switch keyboard. I'll click next. So this is the partition settings. So here you have to select your storage device. I only have one hard drive in this computer. It's one terabyte in size. And if you have more than one, it will show up here. So there are two options here, erase this and manual partitioning. So manual partitioning, you can create or resize partitions yourself. You can install it in a particular partition that you would like. I'm going to select the first option, erase this, and this will delete all the data currently present on the selected storage device. So this is swap to file. You can choose no swap. I'm going to leave it as swap to file. These are the file system. There are only three options. I'm going to leave it as extended for. If you want to encrypt your system, you can check this box. And this is the current on green and this is after. I'm going to click next. So this is the user section. And here you have to input your name, a username and a computer name and a password. So in this section, what is your name? I'm going to type John. And it says, what name do you want to use to log in? I'm going to leave it as John. What is the name of this computer? I'm going to change it to desktop. So I'm going to type the password. I'll retype the password. And there's a checkbox here, login automatically without asking for password. I'm going to leave this unchecked. Click next. So this is a summary of the settings that was chosen. I'll click install and it gives you a warning. Would you like to continue with installation? You will not be able to undo these changes. I'm going to click install now. So I'm going to log in. So once installation is complete and you are logged in into Rhino Linux, you're going to get this screen. So it says here, make your choices. This wizard will take care of everything. So I'm going to click on let's start. So on this page, this is the color scheme. Choose a color scheme for your system. So you can click on the circles. I'm going to leave it on dark, click next. So this is the package manager. So the first option is flat pack. So I'm going to install that. I'm going to turn this on. There's also flat pack beta channel. 
I'm going to leave that off. This is Snap, and this uses the Snapcraft repository default in Ubuntu. I'm going to turn this on. This is the app image. It will install the necessary dependencies to run app images. I'm going to turn this on. Click Next. These are extra settings, and these are optional. I'm going to leave it as default. Click Next. I have to type the password. I'll click Authenticate. So it's all done. I'm going to reboot now. I'm going to log in again. Okay, so you have a top panel here and there's a side panel. So on the top panel on the left, this is where you can log out, restart, shut down or switch user. This is desktop and there's desktop settings and system settings, files, documents, music, pictures, video. So on the right side, this is the clock and date. And this, you can turn on presentation mode. This is the power manager settings. This is the notification bell and there's notification settings here. You can configure notifications. And this is the network settings here. You can edit the connections here. So this desktop computer is connected to the internet by ethernet cable. This is the search bar. And you can type whatever you need to search for in the computer. For example, I'll type start. And this is a sessions and startup app. So this is general. This is the application auto start. And you can uncheck and check any one of these. So you can also add other applications to auto start. And there's description, there's command, and there's trigger. So you can configure the trigger here. This is current session and this is advanced and there's a compatibility here. You can launch GNOME services on startup or launch KDE services on startup. You can manage remote applications here. So this is the application grid. So there's settings manager. So this app is your system. And here you can click and do a system upgrade. There's panel configuration, there's tank. You can configure the panel here. This is the U launcher. So this is the desktop switcher. It's if you have more than one desktop workspace. This is how it shows. So Firefox is installed by default. This is file manager. This is VS Codium. So I'm going to right click the desktop. I can create launcher, create a URL link and create a folder. And create document, open terminal, open a new window, arrange desktop icons. This is desktop settings. So I'm going to change the wallpaper. I'm going to change it to another wallpaper. So these are menus. So you can enable and disable desktop menu, window list menu. You can configure the icons here. So I'll open settings manager. And you can configure different settings, personal, hardware, system, and other. So this is the settings editor. So you can configure all these settings. Okay, so I'm going to click on the search bar. So here you can search for any apps in the system. Also, there's a gear icon on the right side. So right now the hotkey is super S that's to open the search. So I can change this. I just have to click here and I can set a new hotkey. So on the top panel here, I'll just right click. And on panel, you can add new items. There's panel preferences. You can log out here. There's also properties. So I'm going to select panel. 
click on panel preferences. So here you can lock panel. This is the row size, number of rows. You can change all of these. There's appearance. There's items. And you can configure the items on the panel here. You can also add new items to the panel. I'll click on add. I'll select launcher. Click add. So it's here. Click close. So right now the panel is horizontal. I can change that to vertical. And it's here. There's also desktop. I'll click back on horizontal. And this is the row size. And I can change the size of the panel here. I'll click close. So in this video, I install Rhino Linux in a desktop computer. So I want to thank you for watching. And I want to thank you for subscribing.